All right, back with Ask Luca, and um, we got a, a, a good question. Actually, it's two questions in one, so I'm, I'm going to answer both of them. But like, how do we incorporate primal move? And the thing is, primal move is just animal developmental movements, because there's a lot of different, I would say, methods out there. Whether it's sistema, whether it's you know primal primal move, or it's called groundbreaking. Now, uh, there's a lot of different things, you know, that that uh, kind of fall into that category. And um, the second question was. You know, how would, I, how would I go about, you know, post-shoulder surgery rehab? Uh, so I'll start with the first one. Like, the, the way we incorporate primal move here at Vigor Ground is one in warm-ups. Uh, so we kind of start from the ground up. So single joint movements to multi-joint movements, ground-based to standing. Uh, so we love crawling variations, rolling variations, uh, from rolling to crawling to all types of stuff. And, you know, things that people can progress into. Because, like I said, most people have just lost that ability, uh, you know, to, to be able to do things. So if you're getting clients into your business that, you know, sometimes crawling may be on all six, right, to all fours, to uh, everyone can do it. It's just a regression and progression base. So we do a lot of it in warm-ups, uh, do a ton of it as fillers, and, and also uh, we'll sometimes do games, right? So those are the three main things we do. Not to say that we don't incorporate them. Uh, you know, sometimes in density finishers and things like that where there's a bunch of flow going on. But those are the three main ones. So warm-ups, fillers in between exercises, love that. And also like as games and activity that, you know, that first of all, they're fun, they're challenging, gets people laughing, playing, uh, doing a lot of different things like that. So that's our, our main uh, areas that we incorporate them in. When it comes to shoulder rehab, you know, it's, it's always going to be an it depends, right? So Obviously, we're always going to refer out to a physical therapist that we co co collaborate with so we know what's going on. Uh, but the tendency, like with, with shoulder rehab, I'll, I'll kind of give a, a, a mistake that a lot of people make is that to, to zoom in, like, so if, if the injury was at the shoulder, everybody, like, many people tend to look at the shoulder, right? Whereas usually the injury was caused probably because of some other, you know, things going on. So if we look at the shoulder, and we look at the position of the body, right? If somebody's in a ton of lumbar extension, forward head posture, like right now, if I try to put my hands overhead, this is as far as I can get them, like literally, right? But if I get my neck in a neutral position, lumbar spine in a neutral position, all of a sudden, I get more range of motion. So if you think about, you know, looking at core, right, to, to fix core, to fix, you know, uh, I would say a joint by joint approach, uh, so with rehab, you know, it tends to be like, all right, let's, let's fix the shoulder. So whether it's doing soft tissue work, getting range, range of motion back, you know, uh, strengthening those, range, you know, those ranges of motion. But there was a deeper underlying problem with that shoulder injury. Like I said, whether it was that, you know, we, we had a thoracic rotation, we had, you know, forward head posture, we had all these different things going on that we now don't address. So the shoulder gets rehabbed but the cause of the problem stays the same. So now, obviously, we just continue to do things to bring this shoulder back to threshold and it breaks again, right? Or just we get, we get injured again. So that's my, my big takeaway here is that not to just look at the rehab of the actual shoulder, but look at the whole body. Uh, so, I mean, looking at, like I said, ankle dorsiflexion, right? Mobility in the ankle looking at the hips, looking at the core. And like, this is a huge one. Like I said, a lot of people live in these, this lumbar extension where the rib cage flares up, neck goes forward, and the position of our shoulder here is just bad. So mid-low trap doesn't work right, or we have too much shrugging. So like I said, it's a it depends situation. But let's zoom out and look at everything that's going on versus just what's going on in the shoulder. Not, not to take away the obviously post rehab, we have to improve tissue quality. We have to get the range of motion back. We have to get, you know, progressively, uh, I, I would say, you know, whether it's doing isometrics, whether it's doing, a, you know, active release and all these different things that, that will help it get back to that. But if we do not address everything else, it's going to repeat itself. And like every time an injury happens, your threshold kind of starts coming, getting lower and lower if we don't take care of all the right things. So hopefully that answered the question. You know, I'll see you in the next episode of Ask Luca and, um, you know, try to deliver as much of, of, of knowledge as possible. Peace out.